Hey there, I'm Dr. Khan, and welcome back to another episode of Morning Rounds. Ever wonder why there's scheduled maintenance for your car involving oil changes, tire rotations, and fluid checks? It's to keep your car's health as optimal as possible, so it can last as long as possible. So you can catch things early before they cause catastrophic damage. You do this regardless of if your car prompts you with warning lights or makes those weird sounds. See where I'm going with this? As a country, we have gotten quite good at reactive care. We have urgent care, emergency care, and critical care that has become the focus of healthcare. We intubate people, put tubes and lines in them, and do whatever we need to do for treatment, but we don't focus on proactive care um, so that we don't have to resort to urgent, emergent, or critical care. This is not to say that those types of care aren't needed or don't have a role. Of course they do, but the focus should be flipped. By keeping up with preventative care, the likelihood of getting to the point where you are relying on emergent, urgent, or critical care tends to decrease. So the focus of this episode is to help educate you on which preventative care you should be getting to keep that engine running smoothly. Preventative care not only includes a thorough examination and diagnostics, but should also include gender and age-based screenings and vaccinations. I don't want to overwhelm you with the exhaustive preventative care checklist, but I'll go through that. I'll go through what everyone should be asking their doctor at the very minimum. So while there are screenings specific to men and women, to keep this episode digestible, I will only be talking about preventative care that applies to everyone regardless of gender. Let's get started. Hypertension. Blood pressure should be checked a few times a year to determine any specific trends and in increase in blood pressure before treatment would be indicated. Uh, this can be performed at your annual physical or at any time you schedule an appointment with your doctor. High blood pressure puts you at a risk um, for heart disease, stroke, heart attack, and even kidney disease, so it's important to keep an eye on it. Cholesterol or lipids. Lipids should be checked starting at age 20 and should be done once every five years. Now that can certainly change to much more frequently if you have high risk factors. Colon cancer. Colon cancer screening starts at age 50 and is usually done through a colonoscopy. That's when a gastroenterologist, meaning a stomach doctor, will use a camera at the end of a scope that goes through your bottom and surveys your colon for any obvious masses or lesions. Um, if normal, you only need it once every 10 years, but if it's abnormal, that schedule can certainly change. Now, there are other modalities of screening for colon cancer, including home stool test that goes by the name of Cologuard, but the gold standard will always be a colonoscopy as a result, um, as the results are way more reliable, but of course something is better than nothing. By performing the screening at the optimal times, you're, you increase your chances of catching something early on before it becomes a huge problem. Diabetes screening. The sugar. Patients who are 40 or older should be screened for diabetes every three years. Those at high risks, which includes high blood pressure, overweight, family history of diabetes, having high fasting blood sugars, those people can get screened earlier and more often. This is done through a blood test called hemoglobin A1C. Ask your doctor. Lung cancer. All right, if you are 55 or older, a current smoker or used to smoke but quit within the last 15 years, you will need screening for lung cancer once every year. It's a little more technical than that, especially depending on how much you smoke and how long you've smoked for. So this is where guidance from your doctor will come in handy. Uh, the screening is done through a low dose CT lung scan that helps pick up any abnormalities in your lungs as early as possible, giving you a better chance at treatment and survival. And if your scans have been normal, by the time you reach 80 years of age after a discussion with your doctor, you can stop screening. While we are talking about smoking, um, and this only applies to men, if you have ever smoked in your life, it's beneficial to undergo screening for an abdominal aortic aneurysm once in your lifetime at any time between the age of 65 and 75. Why? Because studies have shown that particularly men who have smoked uh, are at a higher risk of developing an abdominal aortic aneurysm later in life and if not monitored, 
would be at risk of rupture, which can be catastrophic. An aneurysm is basically ballooning of your major blood, major blood vessel because the walls of the vessels have weakened, uh, which puts it at a risk of rupture. Let's change gears and talk about immunizations as part of preventative care. Certain immunizations are absolutely vital to help prevent infections, including shingles, pneumonia, chickenpox, and the list goes on and on. For those folks who are 65 years or older, they should talk to their doctor regarding Pneumovax, which is an immunization to help prevent pneumonia. As we get older and our immune system weakens, we become much more susceptible to the type of bacterial pneumonias that can be quite difficult to fight off. Therefore, um, this immunization helps prevent those types of infections. For those who are 50 years or older, talk to your doctor regarding Shingrix. Shingrix is an immunization against shingles and it's given as a two, in two doses. There may be an older version lurking around called Zostavax, which is a one-dose immunization, but for the most part, it's been phased out for the two-dose version. For the younger people, mainly college-aged, immunization against meningitis is something you should talk to your doctor about. Uh, that age range is specifically at risk due to the fact that people around that age tend to be in communal settings, such as a college. Uh, where transmission of bacteria that causes meningitis can be very easy. Meningitis can be fatal if contracted, therefore having super effective protection against something that can easily kill you is obviously beneficial. Um, it's so important that most, if not all colleges at this point, require immunization against meningitis to enroll. If you've never had chicken pox, you might want to discuss the two-dose chicken pox vaccine with your doctor. And most of us have had one Tdap shot in our uh, lifetime. This is to prevent from contracting illnesses from bacteria called Clostridium tetani and Cornobacterium diphtheria. Clostridium can get into your body through skin wounds caused by rusty nails, needles, burns, or animal bites, and diphtheria can cause serious respiratory illness that can lead to heart failure, paralysis, and even death. A booster should be considered every 10 years to keep that immunity going. Another immunization to consider is HPV. HPV is human papillomavirus that has the ability of uh, causing a type of cancer called squamous cell carcinoma. Cervical cancer and head and neck cancers fall in the category of squamous cell carcinoma. Immunizations against HPV helps prevent that risk. This immunization should ideally be given between the ages of 9 to 14, um, and it's a two-dose series. However, if as a kid this immunization was missed, it can also be given up to the age of 26 as a three-dose series. And because cervical, head, and neck cancers can be devastating, the preventative immunization can even be considered in the age range of 27 all the way up to 45 as a three-dose series, based on high-risk uh, status and, of course, advice from your doctor. That's a wrap. Now, obviously, there's much more to cover, especially when it comes to preventative care specific for women and men, but what I've gone over definitely gets a good chunk of your preventative care going. It's important to have a good relationship with your primary care doctor rooted in trust and mutual understanding. That's what I do for my patients, and I always stress the importance of checking under that proverbial hood to make sure that I can keep them strong and healthy for as long as possible and catch abnormal things earlier on so I can help stack the deck in their favor. Until next time, I'm Dr. Khan, and I'll see you on the next Morning Rounds.